and family. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! I know that you think that I'm a little confused, but it is the first day of the new church year. Not our calendar year, but our church year. It is called the first Sunday of Advent, and it is considered a new church year as we make that journey through the many different cycles of church life and faith. Today begins the four Sundays of Advent, which help us prepare for the birth of the Messiah. And we are grateful to have our Sunday school kids leading us on this pilgrimage every Sunday by lighting our Advent wreath. You will see them a little later. We are also grateful to do the teachers who are guiding the kids uh, in this journey together. We welcome you on this journey of preparation and waiting for Christ to be born once more. For those of you online, we celebrate the Lord's Sunday each Sunday, and we invite you to be a part of that celebration by having some common food and drink Andy to share with us later in worship. You may also share your prayer concerns via the chat bar for those of you in person, you can note prayer concerns on the slips in front of you and bring them to our videographer. Also in front of you are pledge slips for our 2022 budget. If you have not done so, please take time to consider what you can share in your financial resources to donate to undergird paying the bills for 2022. You can drop those slips in the offering plate. We hope to get as many back by December 12th as possible, which is our annual congregational meeting to approve the 2022 budget and leadership. We thank the creativity of Linda W. for there are now Francis Court children's gift tags on the Christmas tree at the back of the room to pick up. You're invited to sign your name on the table and designate the tag that you have chosen and then bring back a wrapped gift for that child by December 12th. These are children who are living in transitional housing with their families as parents try to get back on their feet and self-sufficient within our community. Please only take one gift tag to begin with. Then if there are leftovers, you can take a second, but we want to give everybody a chance to adopt a child at Francis Court this year. Speaking of tags, those of you who are regular attenders, please raise your right hand. Place it over your heart. Lift up and say, where is my name tag? <laughs> okay, dear friends, please get and wear your name tags this Advent season because I have been reminded, and we do welcome visitors who join us in this time. Uh, Rob and Jen reminded me, even for those who, have a, who attend on a regular basis, it's always hard to remember people's names. So if you are not sure, it's nice to have a friend across the aisle who is wearing their name tag so you can say, oh yeah, I remember, that's who that is. Thank you for your cooperation in that. Hope that, uh, yes, Julie. If you don't see your name and you need a new name tag, just let me know and I'll make some. Okay. Yes, if you, are, if you have lost your name tag, or if it's in your car and you're not sure where it is, we can make extras. You can have two or three. You can have one for the car, one for the house, one for church. Know that it is not hard to make those, so please let us know. Our Hope Van still needs donations for this week's food giveaway. Uh, it's on the back table. Please sign up, and we need that food by Wednesday in order to be dispersed at the Breslauer site for our unsheltered friends uh, on Friday morning. The quilt and picture raffle tickets are still available for a couple more weeks. Don't miss out on your chance to go home with one of those beautiful handmade items. Uh, and finally, a reminder that if you are greeting baby Ezekiel Ruiz, please wear a mask. Just a gentle reminder, if you would wear a mask when you say hello to baby Ezekiel as his church family, that would be a very loving thing to do. Are there other announcements for our church family? 
Margie. We're looking for someone to work at the fifth floor this Saturday. So if you're available this Saturday from noon to 4.30, I know the person who's already working would really appreciate not being there by herself. Okay, so yes. Let me know. Wait a minute, this is Saturday, the fourth of Saturday? Yes. My panels are not working? <laughs> I only okay. have you. Yeah, cool. I get one. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 Son's on the recruit. Okay. <laughs> uh, let, let me know when you have one for sure. Okay. okay. If there are no other announcements for our church family, I invite you to take a deep breath and allow God to meet you in this place as we prepare for worship. The days are surely coming, says our God. I'm sorry. Please rise if you are able. I think I am. This is the first time. Oh. As you might have, as you might have figured out, this is the first time I've used one of these microphones in 65 years. <laughs> um, thank you. The days are surely coming, says our God, when justice and righteousness will appear. We try to wait patiently for God's promises to be made known to us. Open your hearts and minds to God's teaching as you praise God for all life's blessings. We will watch and pray as we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. We 
will practice endurance and resolve as we look forward to the promised one. And now, please uh, join us in hymnal in the Dread Hymnal Book, number 142, People Look East. I won't be leading the singing because you don't want me to. <laughs> So I'm very thankful for that. And Celeste is going to start, and then Canon is back and forth. Okay. Thank you. We do a lot of waiting around. We wait in line. We wait for grades. We wait in traffic. We wait for a phone call. But are we waiting for the right things? Are we waiting for the Lord? At 
Advent is a season of waiting, but this year we can also make it a season of giving. Long ago, God saw that the people had a great need for Savior. That hasn't changed over the years. We still need our Savior. As we wait for Christ to be born at Christmas, let us not wait to do the good that Christ needs us to do. Let us give to all in need. As we light the first candle, which stands for hope, let us give hope to others. May we serve God as we serve others. Please sing for the first verse of one candle is lit as we light the candle of hope. this Advent season. As we pray this morning, I invite you to keep in your hearts and your thoughts the many prayer concerns of our church family. Please be praying for Marcy F., who is at a rehab facility in Sacramento. We continue our prayers for Rob and Linda W.'s great niece, who is now out of the hospital after a dog attack. Thank you for all your prayers. Linda has some precious photos of her. Uh, her spirits are good. Um, we pray for our world at the emergence of the Omicron variant of COVID. We will keep a close eye on it and we'll adjust accordingly here at church, as always, because your health matters to us. Please be praying for Lynn R's friend, Shirley S. Uh, daughter passed away on Friday. Prayers for the entire family. Please be praying for, uh, uh, Susan Smith asked for prayers for Greg P. Uh, you, we celebrated Kate P's life uh, a few weeks ago uh, in her passing. Uh, we pray for all of those who are grieving during holiday seasons. And uh, so keep Greg uh, in your prayers this day. Are there other concerns or celebrations that we can name before God and this family? Uh, yes, Julie. I have a celebration. A celebration! Yay, Julie's got a celebration! So, you know, my son had his first baby back in September, and he was born with some um, complications, not being able to move his left arm. He has seen three different specialists. He's going to Sacramento, hopefully, within the next 10 days to see another specialist that's specific for the newborns but he actually has he's able to move his arm oh he just good. can't move his elbow still yet but he's able to move his arm like this so that's really good yay yay we will keep the prayers going for julie's grandson but what a blessing that he's yeah. beginning to move his arm and the amazing people at the children's hospital i know are working with him in fresno and uh we will continue the prayers for that if there oh yes kathleen my niece jay and her boyfriend how wonderful so glad to have you friends thank you for being here in worship with us this day it is truly a joy to um, be reunited with family and friends of uh, the holiday season and I'm also aware that there were 30 plus people here on Thanksgiving Day uh, with Julie W as their cook uh, and had a wonderful time and lots of fellowship and rejoicing around the Thanksgiving table here in this room so it is a joy. Uh, we thank God for our loved ones around us. 
If there are no other named prayers, then I invite you to remember these names as well as those who remain silent in your hearts and your thoughts as we go to God in prayer. O oh God of Advent, who models for us patience and waiting, we pray that you will strengthen us for the journey ahead. Guide us with grace that we may better understand your ways. In the midst of a commercialized world that values power and wealth and winning, Give us patience to create peace in the midst of turmoil. Give us wisdom to offer love where it is most needed. Give us discernment to speak up when bigotry or prejudice has taken hold of our community. And equip us to be Christ to those who need it most while you work within the hearts of those who think that they need Christ the least. As days continue to darken and the nights lengthen around us, may you light our way with your presence and prepare us to celebrate the day of your return. Shine your endless love into the darkest corners of this world and provide healing and recovery to those we have named this day. Make us vessels of light as we await your birth and equip us to rejoice with the angels and sing with the saints. Forgive us, O oh God, when we fail to reflect your ways and help us to live as your people, honoring you in all that we say and all that we do. We pray all of these things in the name of the coming Messiah. Amen.
service was changing its rates for first class postage yet again. And the day before the increase went into effect, those people who hadn't bought up enough forever stamps or simply wanted to save money descended upon the post office and stood in very long, long line to get their stamps. The supply was beginning to run low, so the postmaster began to ration out the numbers being sold in order to accommodate the most customers. The news of the rationing did not go over well. Can you imagine? <laughs> and people in line were grumbling about their rights to buy as many stamps as they wanted to, especially if they were expected to wait in such a very long line. The solitary postal clerk was taking verbal and emotional beatings one after another. She looked ragged from the ordeal and about done in. One of the customers was waiting patiently in line. When it was her turn, she purchased her allotted quota of stamps and decided to help the berated clerk out. She said in a loud voice so that everyone in line could hear, what do you mean you're running out of stamps? After all, I've only known about this for four to five weeks. I have put it off and put it off, and now I come in here at the very last minute with all the rest of these people, and you tell me you're running out of stamps. Well, I never. She gave the clerk a big wink, paid for her stamps, and left. The clerk perked up and smiled brightly, and you could have heard a pin drop among the crowd still in line. These days, we find ourselves waiting in line for so many different reasons, and that act of waiting can be tolerable or intolerable, depending on not just the circumstances of what and where we wait, but with whom. The act of waiting in line at Disneyland offers far more rewards than the act of waiting in line at the post office. Yet both require patience as we wait. I don't know about you, but it is not in my nature to be patient. Patience, some would say, like modesty, belongs to people who most need it. And most people who need patience have not yet succeeded in their desires or ambition. They are the ones who haven't achieved or acquired what they want, either by their own standards or somebody else's. So they are told, oh, be patient, it will come. When I was young, I heard it again and again, 
And now I find myself saying the same thing to others. Peter Gomes points out that such words can sometimes appear or sound patronizing or condescending to the one who wants to succeed and hasn't, such as with piano students or beginning athletes. Someone who is adept at piano or sports will say, be patient, it will come. And the listener only finds such counsel discouraging and hardly a stimulus. It becomes more an irritant bordering on an insult. Beginners can sometimes feel like losers or wimps when faced with the experience who tell them to keep at the work and take the long view, the long perspective because they will succeed in the end. We who have done just that, struggled for years to accomplish something, forget what it's like starting out. Be patient, you'll get there. Only reminds others that they aren't there already and they want it now. We aren't so different. We, we weren't so different. We are there who are used to being like the Black Eyed Peas sing, the now generation. Things have to come to us now, and they have to come to us fast. Today in James, James's letter, which is called an epistle, we hear that we are to be patient until the coming of the Lord. James is concerned with the present trials that his readers are facing and the plight of the poor and the powerless. He uses Job and the prophets as examples who suffered afflictions, but showed their endurance and their patience. This context is very important because without such a context, James's words could be used to continue oppression in various ways. Imagine, for example, telling the refugees in Syria, Darfur, or Afghanistan to be patient while they are being slaughtered. Or remember Martin Luther King's response to the Birmingham clergy who counseled, who counseled more patience on the part of black people fighting segregation. King called for a nonviolent tension and direct action because freedom is never voluntarily given to the oppressed by the oppressor. Far too often in our history, the church has misunderstood the encouragement to wait to be patient for change. Even when a black man is gunned down for not stopping his daily jog because civilians demanded he do so, being stigmatized for not wearing socks and having long, dirty toenails. Make no mistake, my friends. There is no room for patience there, and that is not what James is talking about. No. He's saying the Lord is coming in a way and in a form that we have not yet experienced. So we wait for that which we haven't seen, that which hasn't been accomplished yet. But we do not passively wait. Our waiting is meant to be above all else, to act in Christ's stead as fully as we know how. Frederick Beekner blogs, that to wait for Christ as we best can is to be Christ to those who need us to be Christ the most. It is to bring the most we have of Christ healing, passion, hope, and prophecy, because unless we bring it, it may never be brought at all. That is the Advent agenda leading up to Christmas. Yet the sad truth is that the Advent agenda is so often thrown off course by Christmas that it gets lost in meaning and in practice. At this point, it is probably wise for Christians to simply acknowledge that Christmas is no longer ours anymore. It hasn't been for a very long time. We have no claim on it. Therefore, the world is welcome to it. But Advent 
and its expectations, its call for active patience, its earnest waiting, that still belongs to us because admittedly, the world wants nothing to do with it. How we reconcile the patience of Advent with the impatience of human modern living is the problem and the opportunity at hand. Advent is about waiting and patience, which doesn't sit well with the achievers and the accomplished because they are all about success and accomplishments. I find it ironic, therefore, that one of the most cherished sports of our community demands both waiting and patience. It does not fit in with the stigma of humanity's impatience. Golf is a game in which the slowest people in the world are in front of you and the fastest are behind you. It is inundated with people who like to tell dad jokes, which require immense patience. Like the dad who showed up on the golf course with an extra pair of golf pants one day, and his fellow players asked him why. He responded, I always bring an extra pair of pants just in case I get a hole in one. Oh boy. You want more of that? Just, just ask Ferb or Jim or Bud, and I'm sure you will get more, but beware patience is required. Patience is the theme for today. And the costs of our impatience on a societal level are enormous. From our gluttony to oil, to our degradation of the environment, to radical inequalities in the distribution of the world's goods. It is no wonder that James, who is concerned for the welfare of the have-nots, counsels patience, knowing that this life is not all there is, and that God's realm is far better than we could ever imagine. Knowing that makes it possible for us to live a life of open-handed generosity. You see, patience fosters our capacity to let go of, to forego economic gain as a guide and motivation for our actions, and instead to cultivate mutual understanding. You see, James gives us a prime example of what we come to understand as the patience of Advent. And he uses the symbol of the farmer to do so. Patience is the essence of farming. Yet the farmer is anything but a passive participant in the process. To farm is to live all of one's hours in and for one's work. I remember my best friend growing up in high school, Kathleen. Her father was a farmer near Boise. Mr. L was up at the crack of dawn and didn't sit down until dusk. You see, farmers live with two ultimate truths which are held in balance by their own experience. First, the harvest is the result of incredible patience. And second, the harvest is the result of incredible work. The farmer waits and hopes for the autumn and spring rains, but there is nothing that he or she can do to induce them. And that is where the patience comes in. That is where relying on forces beyond one's control comes in. However, in that season of waiting, the farmer is hardly idle, for there is always work that can and must be done. Knowing that time and God alone will bring to fruition what is expected. The farmer knows that what is coming is worth waiting for, and that what is worth waiting for is worth working for. That is the language of Advent. And you can understand why in some ways the world is content to leave it up to us. It's ours without claim or competition. For one can't make a growth industry or commercial products out of advent expectations and waiting. It's not a waiting around for something interesting to happen. It's not a waiting in line just to get something we really, really want. But as with the farmer, it is a working towards that for which we wait. 
In the words of James, we recognize that the only hope worth having and the only harvest worth waiting for are reflected in that confident farmer who looks forward to the precious fruit of the coming of the Lord. Be patient, therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. Amen. As we wait and seek to learn and practice patience in this season, we gather at a table every Sunday to eat and drink from the harvest that God shares with us. As we prepare to do that today, we will sing number 139, All Earth is Waiting, verses 1 through 3. Stand if you're able as we sing together. drop it into the basket. Perhaps you prepared one and lost it this morning. If so, maybe someone else will find it and pick it up and put it in the basket for you. Thank you. 
guide us, Lord, as you accept our gifts, and may they uh, help us serve you in better ways. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hidden by the piano. <laughs> the last time I watched communion, I was struck by the fact that Jesus probably did this. At every Passover or uh, Shabbat Seder that I've been to, the hands are cleaned ritually before the bread is broken, before the prayers are said. There's actually sometimes a little pitcher on the table that people pass around to ritually clean their hands. So that's what we're doing at this table, is remembering what Jesus has given for us. And today we're focused on patience. So many things underlie when patience is weak. The holiday period is so stressful for many people. But this year it's compounded by isolation and by so many of the other fallouts of the last few years. People are tired, worn thin, worn out. We should recognize this. While it's important to have compassion for others as they go through this, there is a child of God you may be forgetting, yourself. When you find yourself short-tempered, exhausted, confused, drained, be patient with yourself. And you can ask for patience. I found this prayer for patience. Dear Lord, please help me. I lay before you my tiredness and ask for new energy. I lay before you my resentment and ask for peace. I lay before you my judgment and ask for inspired understanding. I lay before you my anger and long to be forgiving. I lay before you my frustration and ask for more patience. Please help me, dear Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Serve yourself and your neighbor.
every worship service should lead us into a closer relationship with God who seeks to come each and every moment into our lives. If you have come to a point where God has spoken to you and you want to be a part of a community of faith and grow stronger in your love for Jesus and be baptized or to transfer your membership from another congregation, we ask that you come forward. As we sing our hymn of commitment, it is number 125, Come, O Long Expected Jesus. Stand if you're able as we sing together. some food for them this week. Also, the gift tags are hanging on the tree to take home and buy a gift for a child in need. And for those of you who get your newsletters by uh, postal mail, please uh, pick them up at the back and save us a stamp. Now, dear friends, brothers and sisters, go to practice patience until the coming of the Lord. Go to hold tightly to the rhythms and the expectations of the Advent season in contrast to Christmas distortions that we will be fully prepared, body, mind, and spirit, for the light of the world to emerge and break through the darkness. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>